What's up, Moogles and Chocobos? Chris here again, and it's back. We're updating our UR unit tier list guide for War of the Visions here in the winter. I had a ton of feedback from the first tier list guide, and there's a lot of new units too, so a whole lot to get to as we break out all of the units into different tiers. The first list, I tried to rank units specifically for free-to-play, but I think I'm just going to abandon that. Uh, I'm going to rank the units in terms of effectiveness and then mention anything specific about that unit uh, if free to play or light spender should be aware of it. I also want to point out that after I made my first tier list, the War of the Visions wiki updated their tier list the same week using my rankings. So coincidence? One thing to be aware of, the Japan version of the game has started to release EX jobs for units, which will obviously change a lot of the units and how good they are. So this video is not going to factor in EX jobs, so we'll revisit this in global around March when EX jobs get released. Now before we get into this, I want to make one thing very, very clear. War of the Visions is actually balanced pretty well. so. Just because units are ranked lower on this list does not mean that they are bad. Every UR unit in War of the Visions can be effective, especially if you have the correct vision cards, espers, and gear to pair with them. Tier lists like this are simply helpful for players that maybe are choosing between a few different characters to build or really don't know where to start, but obviously you'll want to build units that play to the strengths of your account. You'll also notice I added another tier here, the Ochu tier, just to break up the tiers a bit more since they're getting a little bit crowded. Okay, enough talk, pitter patter, let's get at her. Moogle tier first and Mashery and Rob remain down here at the bottom of the list. Mashery, there's really not much to say here, but man, I got a lot of flack for putting Rob down here on the first list, but you know, he belongs down here. The only thing he has going for him is that he's a light slash unit that's not limited, and he is one of the first units to get EX jobs, but he still belongs down here in the Moogle tier. Moving down from Cactuar into Moogle, we have Eileen, Elda, and Whisper. And the fact of the matter is, Eileen and Elda have just been outclassed in every single way by newer spear wielders. And Whisper, while possible to be completely impervious to certain attacks, requires a lot of investment and specific setups to make her viable. In all honesty, probably more trouble than she's worth. Onto the Cactuar tier, and we have an entirely new cast for this tier this time around. I want to start off by talking about Jiza, because this one is a fairly complicated discussion. As a unit, Jiza is pretty underwhelming. Not much damage, not much survivability, and the monk main job is just plain bad. That said, Jiza has the Thief sub-job, which makes her one of the few UR units that works well for Steel Time and Steel Heart. But there's now more and more units that have the Thief job, so she's become a little less necessary to fill that role. Regardless, Jiza has the single best Trustmaster reward in the game with her Illusory Bell. There's simply no replacement for this currently in the game, which means if you have Jiza, you absolutely must max her out. She may not end up contributing a whole lot as a unit, but the Illusory Bell is almost required for top-end content in War of the Visions. Um, a lot of people even recommend that Jiza is the only requirement for rerolling on new accounts. Next up we have Ketone, and this one kind of pains me. When Ketone first came out, she was an evasion monster, and her versatile kit meant that she could contribute in a lot of different places. Unfortunately, more and more abilities have come out that negate evasion, so Katone has just kind of fallen to the wayside. One unit that is a one roll wonder is Stern. There's just too many other good slash units in the game now to justify Stern at this point in the game. Still useful in dark slash teams for raids and bosses, sure, but not versatile enough to justify building him up over many of the other units that have come out after him. Speaking of soldiers, Aldoa lands in this tier as well. There's really not much to say here, she's pretty much a wind version of Stern. Although she does have the assassin subjob and a decent TMR, you won't find Aldoa to be all that dominating when it comes right down to it. Lastly, my personal heartbreaker in the Cactuar tier, and that's Yerma. She's one of my personal favorites, and I really, really wanted to push Yerma as a better unit than this, but after trying every which way to use her, I had to get realistic with my waifu, she's just not that good. 
However, Yerma does have the thief sub job like Jiza and one of the best, if not the best, limit breaks in the game for raids and bosses. She can be elite for these specific PvE events, but won't have much of an impact in PvP. Moving on to the Chocobo tier, and these are units that are generally good in their role, but lack the versatility to be ranked higher. To start, I want to talk about Rain and Engelbert. The tank role is a little bit weaker in the meta than it has been in the past, but these two still have their place in the game. Engelbert has held up surprisingly well since the release of the game as a top tier tank. He doesn't require much of an investment in gear, vision cards, or espers to function well as a tank, so he's a great entry level tank for newer accounts. In addition, experienced accounts will be able to stack him with things like the golem esper and golden armor to make him nearly unkillable. Engelbert's not spectacular, yet he remains highly underappreciated. Rain is pretty much the same story as Engelbert, except that he functions as a magic tank, whereas Engelbert is a physical tank. Rain has a couple of other pieces to his kit that are nice, such as multi-hit slash attacks, barriers, hate generation, and magic damage. That said, he still folds pretty quickly to physical damage, but remains a solid tank nonetheless. Rain's bash bro Laswell lands in the chocobo tier as well, and Laswell actually does a lot of cool things, and he can hit like an ice truck, but his range is extremely limited, and there just aren't a ton of defensive tools in his kit either, so he folds faster than a 2-7 off suit in Texas Hold'em. Moving down into this tier is Miranda. Miranda is a fantastic unit, and she can do a lot of things pretty well, but when she came out, one of her main draws was that she did great magic damage while also being able to heal and use time magic. Well, since then, Miranda has been slightly outclassed by other units like Ildira, Kilfey, and Halloween Leela, so while Miranda remains a pretty good investment overall, she's not quite as potent as she used to be. And speaking of units on the decline, we need to talk about Frederica. And listen, you guys know how I feel about Frederica, but the time of the Gunners is a little bit dated in War of the Visions, and Frederica's kit is a little dated as well. She can still wreak havoc in PvP with her barrage ability and is valuable for tower events, but in general her damage and versatility are a little bit limited. Wait, what, what am I doing? She deserves her own waifu goddess tier. Always and forever, Freddy. Always and forever. Moving on to the Tonberry tier, we have Mediina and Skahal. And while slightly different, these two function basically the same way in combat, as glass cannon mages who can deal large amounts of AoE magic damage, while having some limited utility in other ways. Skahal's probably a bit more versatile than Medi with the subjobs, but the lightning element is also a little bit weaker than ice currently in the game. Mediina is also given to all new accounts with headway towards maxing her out, so for new players, it's really not a bad idea to build up Mediina early to jumpstart your account. Next up we have Lucia, and this may seem like a big drop for Lucia from the Behemoth tier, but in reality it's probably justified. As I mentioned earlier, gunner units are weaker now than they used to be, and Lucia is getting one-upped slightly by the release of Luartha. She's still a very good unit, and will contribute in many areas of the game, but not nearly as dominant as she used to be. Victoria lands in the Tonaberry tier as well, and she's a unit where the effectiveness varies greatly on what gear and cards you have for her. With a plus 5 Ice Lance and Demon Wall or Snowy Fields Vision cards, Victoria is one of the top damage dealers in the game, but without those things, well she's still a pretty solid Dragoon unit with the Thief subjob for raids and bosses. Lastly, we have Niv Lu, who I hope I'm not underrating here since she's not yet out in global as of the making of this video, but she functions sort of like an anti-support, dispelling buffs and barriers and other various debuffs. In terms of damage, she's adequate but not exceptional. And there's a world where Niv Lu could be a very scary unit because of her defense, penetration, and speed, but she's not going to anchor an account like some of the other units on this list. If you're in need of a good range to DPS though, you could definitely do a lot worse than Niv Lu. Now into the Ochu tier, and we lead it off with Gilgamesh. Now I had him in the Mughal tier last time simply because he is a premium unit and the cost to build him is so high, but in terms of raw power, 
Gilgamesh is one of the strongest slash units in the game. His Kotesu ability is up there in the running for the best single ability in the game, as well as Excalibur, Armor of Discontinuity, and Clairvoyant Blade. The only thing holding Greg back is his double Vizior cost, and that makes him difficult, if not impossible, for free to play or light spenders to build up in any amount of time. Ochu number two is Ultra Waifu Glacella, and there's really not much to say here. Uh, good speed, good damage, good survivability, chaining, defense penetration. Uh, she's currently the best overall piercing unit in the game, and this alone is enough to rank her this high. The next unit I have to issue a personal apology to. Kilfe, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't believe in you when you first showed up. I'm sorry that I called you just okay. I'm sorry that things didn't work out differently for us. I'm sorry that I can't go back and change the past, but I'd like to make things right. Because, because you deserve it. And I hope this apology is enough for you to forgive me. Okay, next up is Howlett, who in my opinion just barely makes this tier instead of Tonneberry. He does require some help from gear and vision cards to see his full potential, but his full potential is very scary. Large amounts of AoE damage and a wind attack boost for the entire team, you'll have a top tier DPS unit if you do decide to build him. And lastly, moving down from the behemoth tier into Ochu, we have Ayaka. And don't get me wrong, Ayaka is still every bit as good as she used to be. It's just that other units with top tier healing have been released, and Ayaka's not quite as unique as she once was. Now that said, she's still invaluable for PvE and can turn PvP fights on a dime and remains the best dedicated healer in the game. And now for the denouement, the behemoth tier, and we'll start by talking about an oldie but goodie, Venera. In terms of raw power, Venera probably isn't quite as good as many of the units in this or the Ochu tier, but she still has incredible damage, evasion, speed, and mobility, but most importantly, versatility. Venera remains the best steal time unit in the game for raids and bosses, and it can be impossible to hit her in PvP without auto-hit abilities, and she also breaks down light units like Warrior of Light and Cecil as good as any unit in the game. Venera does a whole lot of things, and she does them extremely well. Up next we have Ildira, and there's really not much to say here other than the arithmetician job is just so powerful, but the glasses, I mean, that would bump her up a tier all by itself. Ildira is very scary to run into when you're fighting in PvP, and she's an anchor mage unit for any account. The other premium unit, Revenge of the Sith Stern, lands on the Behemoth tier. Overall the highest damage slash unit in the game, Goth Stern just has ridiculous range, damage, and just shreds light units faster than the accounting records at Enron. Because he's a premium unit, it does take a pretty penny to build him, but Masquerade Stern will likely be a top tier damage dealer for a really, really long time. Landing in the Behemoth tier is Lu Artha, and we already talked a little bit about her when we talked about Lucia, but she is, on a basic level, Lucia that does more damage. While gunner units are a little bit outside the meta at the moment, the amount of damage that Luartha can dish out at the range she can dish it is actually kind of absurd, and with the right gear and cards, she's even more of a monster. Finally, the last unit to mention is Sakura. With the ability to have over 500 base magic, and yes, you heard that right, 500 base magic, and 50 spirit penetration as well, and some of her abilities, and then some other utilities in her kit, Sakura is going to be a top tier mage for a really long time in War of the Visions. Not to mention that she can deal damage in multiple elements. Sakura is a no-brainer must-build if you happen to pull her on your account. To finish up, I'll tack on the limited units here, and there's not really I want to mention here since all these units are limited. Uh, the Christmas units did get a buff in global, but even with these buffs, they probably won't have a ton of staying power. I really wish Freyevia would just get released into the normal unit pool because it doesn't really make much sense that she's a limited unit. And there you have it guys, the full UR tier list for Winter 2020 in War of the Visions Global. Whether you're starting a new account or just trying to figure out who you want to build next, hopefully this list can help you sort through some of those decisions. Let me know if you think I under or overrated any of the units on this list, and thanks for dropping in guys.